yellow alert, guys. Our research team has just been contacted with a very important piece of information that talks about a solution to solve our fragmented ecosystem. Right now, one of the key problems is that we have Ethereum, Solana, BSC, Bitcoin, Tron, Base, Plasma, Arbitrum. We have all these different networks all holding value. Yes. The biggest problem I see is that moving funds and even knowing how much you have is a big issue. And sometimes even moving between networks, say you have something on Tron, mm. you want to move that on base, yeah. it's going to cost you $150. Yes. <laughs> yes. Big problem. We're here to announce a very big piece of news, which is that Yellow Network, they're building out the first layer three. So this layer three is going to be the one that unites them all. They're combining what they have with XRP, so Ripple's EVM compatibility smart contract layer. Mm -hmm. This basically allows them to use the speed of Ripple and the low cost of Ripple, but combine that and work with EVM compatible chains, which is pretty much everything at this moment. So we're really, really happy to share this announcement with you guys and just tell you a little bit about what this means for our overall network. Let's get started. Why don't we just run through what is Yellow first of all. Mm. Yellow Network, they're designed to kind of unify a lot of chains. There's also a very technical distinction to be made here because Yellow Network is not a cross bridge protocol. This is actually very different because Yellow Network is actually a layer three clearing protocol enabling exchanges and brokers to aggregate fragmented liquidity. So it's not about simply crossing the chain and making that message, but it's really about combining what exchanges and brokers have in terms of funds and then communicating that. So this is actually why it's possible to, for institutional players to also execute multi-million dollar trades seamlessly rather than simply communicating messages between chains. It's backed by one of Ripple's co-founders. So basically they raised $10 million for decentralized clearing. Mm. They identified this problem very early on mm. that in a decentralized world, mm. there's just so many decentralized networks you need to be able to transfer yeah. funds between that. Yeah. And we see multiple solutions being popped up, but this is the first one that combines Ripple's XRPL technology. So the cool thing about this layer three clearing network is it eliminates the need for constant bridging and reduce latency for cross-chain transactions mm -hmm. without overloading base networks. They're kind of trying to offload the work. Exactly. Right? Yes. Like right now, like if you're trading on BNB with Aster, yeah. and then you want to go and trade on Hyperliquid, yeah. or you want to do something different, mm -hmm. or even Ethereum, right? You want to be cheap, but you also don't want to overload networks. Yeah. You just want to move those funds around very effectively, essentially. Their team is also really standout, especially Alexis Yellow, or his full name being Alexis Sarkia. Sakia has been one of the co-founders of GSR. So GSR, everyone's heard of this. They are the leading cryptocurrency market making firm. So if you're actually in any trade or brokerage, you've heard of GSR and you know what they do. He played a very pivotal role in Ripple's early growth. On top of that, he's a literal rocket scientist. And there's a little bit about him buying a bank. So we'll talk about that in the later part of this video. The latest news update is that they are integrating with the new XRPL EVM, which is live. I feel this is something different because Ripple's got a huge following and huge base. Mm. I mean, 2016, everyone's like, yo, Michael talked about Ripple. <laughs> but uh, now uh, I feel like Ripple wasn't really integrated into any of the EVM spaces. Mm -hmm. But now that they have made the step forward, they yeah. are now combining with Yellow to integrate everything together. Mm. And I think we're at a very different time now. It used to be just payment solutions, no? Yeah, exactly that. And now they're really expanding and they're saying, okay, look, they can be the one that unites everyone together. Mm. And because they have already have a lot of the institutional finance backing and the support from that end, mm -hmm. yeah, that, that actually makes a lot of um, uh, interesting use case because now you can have more direct access to traditional finance as well. Mm. So it's not a box mining video without going into a little bit of detail into how this actually works. Mm. So it's quite clear the problem that they're trying to solve is this fragmentation. We all have so many different coins and different networks, mm -hmm. but communicating between these public mainnets are a big primary problem. And you know, that's going to be an issue, even bigger issue as time progresses. Mm. So what they do is they want to do chain agnostic clearing. So they don't want to just be just on Ethereum. 
layer, but you know, having Ethereum Ripple does help. But they want to be chain agnostic. So as long as you have funds on yellow, then you can go anywhere you want. Mm. So like having the global passport. Yeah, and it would be that yellow is the underlying foundation mm. with the so-called state channels facilitating billions of messages between many, many different chains. Exactly. Yeah. So the, how it works is basically because it... Uh, relies on Ripple technology, it can support up to billions of off-chain messages per day. That's basically what they're very good at. Now, what they need to do is they just need to match that with the corresponding chains. Mm -hmm. So if, say, for example, you're on BNB, yep. you want to withdraw mm -hmm. one BNB, mm -hmm. all right, tell, tell that to the yellow network, that's one communication right there. Then you want to put that on base, mm -hmm. that's another communication. Yes. So it's really just communicating and make sure that everything can communicate directly with yellow network and mm -hmm. it can clear those messages. And I also like how it says, by doing so, it provides a unified virtual ledger where applications interact seamlessly across chains. In terms of the architecture, what they have is Nitro Lite. It's using the latest tech. So it's using a modular framework building on ERC 7824 basically as a communication method for off-chain state channels. And this is the one that caters more to me because this is the tech that will allow me and the brokers to conduct real-time trading by exchanging liabilities, updating positions off-chain while retaining some really good security through smart contracts. So essentially the way it works is it relies on brokers that um, are operating a clear node. Essentially what it does is it provides a clear message to the network that transactions are being made and it makes sure that issues that like uh, big cryptocurrency hacks won't happen. So Wormhole was hacked for $321 million in the cyber attack and that's because they acted as a bridge and there was third-party counterparty trust that you must have. Yellow's technology is different. They are powered by state channels. So they do clearing rather than hold custody. And because it's built on state channels, it means trades are conducted off-chain instantly without counterparty risk. Parties don't even have to trust each other. They just have to know that, well, there is a decentralized network of nodes that power the real-time trading. What they're trying to do is they're trying to achieve basically throughput as centralized exchanges. Um, we've been talking about this for a long time and we're, we're slowly getting there, mm. right? We saw before, we almost thought the leverage trading on crypto was uh, impossible. That was only done by centralized exchanges, but on decentralized exchanges, we thought it was impossible. Mm -hmm. Now that we have Aster, Hyperliquid and all these leverage exchanges, um, it's possible to do that mm. with chain without you know, doxing your trade position. Mm. So now I think with yellow, you can achieve the same speed mm. of transferring between these networks. So yeah. it's kind of like gluing all these networks and making it one. Mm -hmm. We have one last bit of yellow news as well, which is that yellow is also kind of buying a bank. So they've actually started talks with the uh, prime minister of Macedonia, essentially using the funds that they have to start looking at buying a bank. And this is kind of interesting because this isn't just a bridge between all the decentralized networks. Mm -hmm. But if they buy a bank, that means a bank can become a access point for centralized finance mm -hmm. and to kind of bridge these two ecosystems together. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that's kind of something very, very interesting. Like they recently posted this and they said, hey, this is happening. And mm -hmm. usually when you buy a bank, Bank, it's not just you know for small ambitions mm. this is rather for a very very large ambition which is kind of uniting that DeFi and TradFi. sort of a way to like test integrations between web3 and fiat systems yeah so this will really need to do with scpa payments it will be due with cross-border payments mm. and because they have the bank it's a lot easier to work with compliance officers there so essentially making sure that Everything works and blends well together mm. both ways, right? From DeFi to TradFi and from TradFi to DeFi as well. Mm. And because Macedonia has access to European banks, mm -hmm. well, this is going to be a multi-bank infrastructure in Europe. Yeah, it's such a large-scale operation. There has to be some questions too about institutional compliance. And I think that's where Yellow has the edge compared to other DeFi protocols because they mirror traditional capital market structures, separating custody, clearing execution, while also still allowing KYC, AML enforcement at the network's edge. And, and you know, quite frankly, there, there are people on a channel that were, you know, crypto focus only, mm. you know, decentralized only. But I think coming into 2025, mm. it's quite clear that having regulatory support is also um, going to be a big edge. I mean, yeah, at the end of the day, <laughs> any money is good money <laughs> and traditional money is uh, eventuality. 
So having that expertise there, which is what Ripple's team's good at and what their founders, Chris Larson, is good at, they're good at working with institutional capital. Right? Oh, yeah. And that's, um, you know, it's, it's a lot of it's a lot of three letter acronyms. But at the end of the day, <laughs> a lot of governments in the world know a Ripple. Yes, a Ripple. <laughs> So there's a lot to expect for Yellow Network. They're really planning big in the future. So this year, the team will be delivering the first major release of the clear node technology stack, the one that Michael yep. was just talking about to secure a lot of the chains. So the communication between the, the chains. The communication between the chains. So there's no gap. Mm -hmm. There's no easy hacks. So afterwards, the roadmap will include expanding support for both EVM and non-EVM blockchains. That's going to be big. Introducing account abstraction enabled cross-chain swaps, growing the brokerage ecosystem. And together, these steps will broaden protocol utility while reducing integration barriers for developers and partners. So there will be some questions about Yellow's token because eventually all settlements have to be done in Yellow and Yellow will be the main token of this network. Mm. What they have done is they recently completed a $1 million raise on Republic. So that's actually great to get the public interested. Uh, big win for the team. They've also talked with investors. So there's some rumors going on to refund some of the investors so that the more the community can own more of the token as well. So they're focusing very much on community focus this year. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, bring value to the network. Lastly, there's a lot of activity on Yellow's Telegram. So if you've been involved or any, have any interest in Yellow, please do check out the Telegram. We'll put a link down below. So that's our take on Yellow. I think this is, yet again, something we, we really need right now. There, there's just so many networks. Uh, I don't want to rely on sending money to and from Bybit mm. in order to get my funds everywhere. Yeah. Having one decentralized solution is what, you know, or just one wallet for everything will probably make sense. So that's why this is a really big announcement. And that's why I think it's an important announcement for this channel. And with that, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Mm -hmm. Shout out.